So like for you to have 1.3 million subscribers, that's not the same to me as if you swam downstream playing to convention. Okay. Like what establishment Netflix Hollywood wants. Right. So like if you did that, I think you would have had 10 million subscribers. I could have is the crazy thing. Yeah. yeah. So the <laughs> fact that you have managed to get to this point, to me, that, that the, you know, I think creators who go that upstream mm -hmm. have less, but they have greater intensity. Mm -hmm. It's harder because you're fighting for every subscriber follower. You're not getting promoted by the platform to new subscribers, followers. You're not getting necessarily promoted by views. People are sharing it. And I think it takes greater intensity to have someone share your content. Yeah, well, it's like you're going against the mainstream narrative. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like and you're constantly like being attacked 24-7 for just going against what the culture wants. I mean, that, that, and that's it. You know, it's uh, even you see it with comedy. Uh, you see it with uh, politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, have just noticed that like Matt Reif. Uh, have you seen his content? No. And, and I want to just say he does comedy. And if you look at Matt Reif, and I, and I respect him. I think he's a talented comedian. At the same point, I think because he has a face where you could say, objectively speaking, is he a transvestite or not? No, no, no. But uh, Wait, can I Google? Yeah, sure. You know, what's, his, what's his name? Matt Reif. And, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not making fun of him. I, I respect him. I'm just making this as a case study because I've, I've studied Matt Reif. Oh, okay. Okay. So he's, 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 he's a, like a pretty boy. He's a, a he's, Yeah. I mean, he's objectively handsome. He's objectively nice, friendly guy. Mm -hmm. And objectively, you could imagine that he's a transvestite, right? Like he might, he might be with the lips and everything. Maybe. <laughs> now, hold on. No, hold on. Let me, just tell you, let me just tell you my point. Let me just tell you my okay, point. Okay. That's my point. But like, if he makes a joke, or if you and I, let's just say we're having fun, we make a joke. Yeah. We get the same analytics as him back end. Shares, comments, likes, excellent. I think because he makes jokes at the expense of men, oh, at the expense of men looking yeah. bad, that he can get 10x, 20x the views. But if you and I make a comment that women or a specific other community doesn't like, we're completely uh, not not getting that support. And, I, and, I, and we're getting maybe violations, et cetera, and so forth. And bans. I mean, you and I have been probably banned... You know, how many uh, accounts have we like together yeah. been a kicked lot. off? A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least five yeah. for me on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more, yeah. actually. I don't even know. I did a video last night. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it. I have a small team. And one of my guys was like, he hit 355,000 views. I can't even have an account on TikTok. So I count on my supporters. Yeah, same. Yeah. I can't have it. They, they don't give me that privilege. Yeah. You know, uh, so, so. He had 355,000. He's like, yo, man, I got 355,000 views last night. I was like, all right, cool. It was the response to a, a lesbian couple I did. And then, and then I went to look on it. It wouldn't show up. And that's happened to me more than once where I see it. So there's like a new sort of shadow ban on TikTok where they hide your content on to everyone who didn't follow you or it wasn't shared to. It's like next level. And uh, I don't think Matt Reif ever deals with that. I think that there are a ton, like, for example, your rich BFF. She's in the business education category. Okay. She's a famous supporter for basically being an influencer going to the Biden White House, let's say. Okay. Far left liberal by all standards. Okay. She can put out content that gets a fraction of the shares of you and I. Yet she can get 1.8 million followers on Instagram, get 1 million views with, let's say, 2,000 shares. That's a fucking joke. I, mean, I don't know, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying. Well, I'm they're pushing I'm, them. They're pushing them. Yeah. Whereas you aren't being pushed the way you would have or I would if we were pushing their narrative. Well, and the crazy thing is their narrative is evil. A lot of the stuff really they put, like it's anti-masculinity. It's like teaching women to be men. Um, it's often shitting on men um, for like... And it's just interesting because the things that like red pill or like more conservative people promote are are good. But the left, I would just say it, it's not. 
it, it doesn't like promote it's like promoting promiscuity promoting like it's not promoting families it's like that sort of thing and yet they push that stuff i would say in about 24 hours of being here in london mm -hmm. i have probably seen about 20 25 flags for homosexuality oh my gosh and it's so bad here uh, yeah I, literally in about 24 hours, I've probably seen on average, maybe one homosexual flag. And I'm not even including the hours I slept. So I'm just saying about, let's say about 25 hours. And I think about yeah. it, 25 gay flags. When I got to the airport in London, I saw a photography advertisement to showcase what London is. Out of the four photos, two of them showed photos of homosexuality. Not one fault. You're telling me in London, it's not a part of London that a man my age would have a wife and kids. That's not London. But out of the four pictures describing London to newcomers, two is homosexuality. One is like, uh, you know, a Pakistani kid like having ice cream. And then one is like the street corner. But you know, two is homosexuality. And, and then they'll <laughs> act like they're not throwing it in our face. When it's Yo. it's literally everywhere. I can't go anywhere and not see gay flags. Yo. Like where are my straight flags? I want <laughs> I want a month dedicated to the straight people. That's where we're going. Let's let's celebrate straight straight reality. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's celebrate it. But now I gotta see the and the crazy thing is I don't even know that many gay I don't even know that many gay people. Yeah, so it's like we've all I, you probably saw more flags for gay yeah. pride than actual gay people. Yeah, I, I really like. And what's even more unique is the combination of like seeing a group of Pakistanis and Indians that are like religious. Yeah. And then you see them with a group of gays next to each other. And, and it's just unique. It's just a unique eclectic mix here that I, I don't remember uh, seeing London like this, but London does remind me a lot of New York uh, okay. when I'm in Europe. I would say in the last 30 days, three things that stuck out to me about West, about Europe. One was in Zandvoort, Netherlands. I was walking across the street and I looked down and I saw like this blue purple color. I said, wait a minute, that's odd. Like the Avion drink. Then I looked a little bit more and I saw the other colors. Then I realized that the crosswalk and, you know, German zebra strife, and you probably know because you lived in Germany, was, was, uh, was like the LGBT colors with the trans colors. Mm. So they have it on the street. This is in Zandvoort, Netherlands, all within the last 30 days. Then a few days ago in Spain, in Marbella, on the government building, they had flags. They had the EU flag. I get it. The, the, the flag of Spain. I get it. The local state flag. I get it. And then the LG, the gay flag on the government building. And they're putting it that they're implying that it's equally as important. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like oh, the, the country, the city, the state and gay people. This is all up. on the It's like you can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit Where up. Where is my straight person flag? Where? What yeah. about a flag for marriage? Yeah. What about a flag for children and marriage? Facts, man. But no. And you know what's interesting? I realize how rare it is for people my age to be like married and have kids. Like it's so rare. And I was thinking about the people my age that like under 40, I would say, like under 35, 40 that have been married 10 years. It's like it doesn't even exist. Yeah. Yeah. They're pushing, they're pushing the degeneracy pretty hard. And then, so, so, so there's that one situation in Zanford, Netherlands, Okay. there's a situation in Marbella, Spain. And then the situation here where I'm seeing like a, a high quantity of gay flags and advertisements of homosexuality, but I have yet to see one picture that reflects London, which just shows, Hey, it's just this man, a woman, and his two daughters. Like, really, like, but all these gay flags. And it's it's just a little, and by the way, I have gay friends. I have nothing, and I'm, I'm sure you're pretty cool with them too. I, I have nothing against, it's just, at some point, we're, we're denying the obvious. That it's just being shoved down our throat. Right, and at some point, it's being pushed. Like, that's it my is. problem. It it's is. just like, why don't, why don't, we have all these events and special stuff for them. Like, we don't have any events for singles looking to get married. 
in the next year. You yeah, know, yeah. like I've never really seen, I've never really seen that. I'll see things pushing like hookup culture, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I don't see anything pushing families yet. They'll have whole events for gay people. Where, where is the equivalent? Yeah. It's, it's, so, I, if, if, if I were your age, I sound like an old man, but if I were mm-hmm. and I see like a 20 year old, 23 year old, you know, I'm like, wow, I'd never remember, uh, d- seeing this so much when I was younger, you know, and I could imagine now how young men are, are more confused about it, you know? And, and, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty striking. 